The Bulls have been synonymous over the last couple of decades with having a couple of players who seem to be able to slot in wherever they're called on to slot into. And today, no different as we catch up with Ruan for Mark. We're continuing on to chat to players, coaches, uh, in the midst of what's been a phenomenal season for the Bulls. Phenomenal in that the fans have been absolutely wonderful. One of the people they've been cheering on, Ruan Fermak, a man who plays in more than one position. But before we get there, let's uh, start from the beginning, because Mr. Fermak, you were at Monas. So you are Krugerstorp, West Rand, Ruderport yeah. side of town. Is that yeah. that's where it all started for you? That's where it all started. Yeah, Krugerstorp, all the way. So very proud of that. I assume it was in high school where you decided this is it. Rugby is it. Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely you, know, all, you grow up with the passion and you want to play rugby. But I think in high school, maybe end of high school, when you think, yeah, things are going well, you can actually maybe start making a career of this. So, um, yeah, so it was end of end of high school. How important is it for a young man sitting in the classroom to have heroes to look up to? Because I think of your old school, and there are a couple of legends who went to that school. I mean, yeah. the last one, or the one who always comes to mind, is like a Jacques Fourie. Yeah. Um, does that inspire you? Does it motivate you? Definitely. And I think it's very important to have those heroes and to look up to, um, yeah, to to those players and find inspiration from them. Um, so I think it plays a massive role, um, yeah, a very big role in, in every rugby player. So, yeah. so transitions, these changes, they seem to happen very quickly, especially as a youngster. I'm pretty sure it must have felt like one day you're in class, the next day uh, SA schools, and then the day after that, a professional rugby contract. Yes, definitely. It, um, like, <laughs> yeah, it happens overnight. Um, there's nothing that can really prepare you for, for all those changes. And, um, yeah, it just happens so quick, you know. Um, yeah, everything can change in one day, in one moment, you know. So, um, but it's been a good journey so far. So, well, The one thing that I think we all know about you now is that you're not going to just do the usual. You're going to be extra because you must love a challenge. So <laughs> that, that transition was big enough, but you decided, Niene, yeah? Japan. Yeah. What made you make that decision and you ended up at uh, Tokomo? It's actually a quite a few things that led up to, to me making that uh, decision. Um, but I just thought, you know, it was where I was in my career, yeah. you know, it was good for, good for a change and um, to go and learn something new with different, um, at a different country, different style of playing, just build on my, my game. Um, so I thought, you know, I had the opportunity to go, it was a two-year deal and I thought, you know, if, if it doesn't work out, if I want to come back home, then I can come back home and I gain that knowledge and experience. So a good decision for, for the begin of your loop on, because a lot of players wait until the mm. end before they start traveling. Is that something you'd advise a young player to do? Maybe go and see the world, maybe go and play somewhere else, get in a culture, learn something new about the game of yeah. rugby? So I think obviously it depends for um, each, each player. You know, everyone has their own needs and different circumstances. So I won't say this is a right decision, but you know, if you have the opportunity and you think it's a right decision, you're going to be exposed to new cultures and new way of playing and learn new stuff. So if you have the opportunity, why not? Yeah. So be yeah. flexible. <clears throat> be flexible. So definitely is. And you are Mr. Flexibility. How many positions do you play in the rugby field? <laughs> no, so <laughs> officially only lock, but, but. Um, <laughs> no, so um, yeah, I would say lock and lose forward seven and eight as well. So yeah. if, if if they need me, they must. So. But I definitely prefer lock. So, yeah. yes. But I suppose these days you do need to have that in your uh, um, in your locker. You do need to be able to fill in when called upon. How much does that help your game, just as a player, mm. to be able to slot in in different places and think about the game differently? Maybe when you're defending at lock versus mm. um, on the loose, uh, you know, yeah. it surely must make you think slightly differently about the flow of the game, the feel of the game. Uh, and this is the way you look at it? Yes, definitely. I think because you can get so used to just playing one position and get comfortable in that position. It's not a bad thing, but you get comfortable in that position. Um, so as soon as you start playing a new position, you have to start, um, like you said, you, th you start thinking about different stuff. Yeah, it's not that one dimension that you're used to. Um, yeah. So and it definitely helps to build on your, um, your, your game itself and to grow. Yeah. Does that Bulls jersey feel heavy. I mean, if I think of the people who've occupied uh, those jerseys at lock over the years, I mean, you can start from Oum Friak to the Victor Bucky's, Donny Rousseau's of, of the world. And these are real legends, real heroes, and you are a caretaker um, of that. 
Uh, does it come with a lot of uh, responsibility, a lot of weight? Definitely. Like you said, there's been some amazing rugby players and yeah, legends of the game that played in those positions. Bakis and Victor and Frick and you can name them. So every time you wear that jersey, um, there's definitely a set of responsibilities that um, comes your way. But it's, it's an honour and, and it's a privilege um, to, to wear those jerseys. The one great thing about playing your rugby at Loftus though, is that you are surrounded by some of the best rugby minds in the country, by some very senior players who've been there, mm. done it all. Who do you look up to? Who do you speak to? Whose ear do you go and whisper into if you just want to maybe tweak your game, learn something new, try something different? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, if you take players like Morna Stein and Bismarck that year, it's been what a privilege is to actually be in a team that has those two players. So, um, you know, if you can go to a guy like Bessie and you know, just, I know he's not, he's not the same position, but, you know, if you just feel a little bit nervous before a game or you're not sure how to handle uh, different situations, you know, he's been through everything. So, um, to go to, to be able to go to a player of that caliber is, you know, it's, it's, it's a privilege. But now, why do the Oaks call, why do they call um, Morne Morne and they call Bissi Worm? What, what is that all about? <laughs> <laughs> it would probably be the haze or the, the, yeah, the, the, haze, yeah, the yeah. <laughs> lack of air that one person has. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Chris Mark, if you're watching this, I'm sorry I didn't call you Um. I meant to call you Manier. Ron, thanks very much uh, for your time. Okay. All of the best. It's been a phenomenal season so far. It's not over yet. You guys still have plenty to play for, plenty to fight for. Um, and, and I hope that you'll get those results in the end. I know that that Stormers loss was the one that hurt, yeah. uh, but it's also motivation, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. I know we have an opportunity next weekend again, so um, yeah, so we'll go and do our best to fix it. So yeah, but thank you so much. Just like in the game of rugby, you too can get better at playing the bounce in life with the help of Change Science. So head over to the Change Exchange and learn how to play the bounce in life. Thank <laughs> you.